Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of FTT Chats. I'm Nisa Moyle, Director of Strategy at BC Innovations, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Neil Dabda. Neil is Account Majors Manager with Bull360 at LogMeIn. Hello, Neil. Hi, Lisa. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. With our FTT chats, we always like to start off with our interviewee telling us a little bit about him and your role at Bull360. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a major account manager, as you, as you correctly introduced. I work within the Bull360 team and have done so for about uh, coming up to four years now and, and work with a number of large enterprise customers uh, some of which are prominent within the financial services sector. Brilliant. Thank you for that introduction. And I'd like to also, I'd like to follow on now with a question about, you know, what we've seen over the past year. Obviously, a hallmark has been the rapid shift to remote ways of working and, and you know, that's happened at pace. Do you think that this shift is permanent? Is this a, you know, something that we'll, we'll see going forwards or will people start returning to the office once um, the pandemic hopefully starts to abate? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, I think. I think at the start, myself included, um, welcomed the opportunity to work from home and, and have more flexibility um, in terms of working hours. I think one, one of the upsides that has come out of of this whole uh, period has been the ability to, to reanalyze the status quo and say, actually, can we do things differently and, and do things better? Um, so I think that we will go back to a hybrid. I think that's what's changed. I think the initial excitement of being able to work from home and the flexibility that that offered has been overtaken by the need for, for that face-to-face -face interaction, the ability to create cultures in offices, um, the ability to connect with your clients deeper. And I think you'll see a balance there between not only the number of days a week you work in the office, but also the times that you actually work. It might not be a conventional nine to five. You may start earlier and finish earlier, or you may even continue to work after dinner. I think companies have realized that uh, work has to be more flexible in, in working around your daily schedule and has welcomed that, which has been really refreshing, I think, and something that, that LogMeIn themselves are doing too. Yeah, that's a great point because we tend to define flexibility as just being at home or in the office, but there's so much more to it as you as you describe. Mm -hmm. And thinking about those changes that we've seen, what are some of the key challenges that the companies that you work with um, have faced over the over the past year with this with this rapid shift to remote working? Yeah, we've seen a variation. I think. I think I tend to work with larger scale organizations and for them it was to have the ability to overnight suddenly en masse have thousands of staff working from home and having to adapt therefore to technical issues, how do they function at uh, the same level of productivity that they were doing when they were in an office and therefore it has accelerated the digital strategy of many of these businesses. Digital strategy was perhaps uh, second or third priority in some cases. It's now at the very top and it's getting that sea level interaction and attention. And that is then building uh, a better case for budgets and, and also the ushering in of an involvement of the customer experience and also the employee experience, um, you know, I've got some colleagues that I haven't even met face to face and they've onboarded, they do a great job and they've all been able to do that remotely um, without even meeting some of their uh, colleagues. Um, so it's quite a bizarre experience that the company has to adapt. And what that also means is that your flexibility increases in, in your hiring process. Um, you know, I'm based in London, but that's really an integral 
or think for a London-based uh, um, satellite office of, a, a, of, a, of an American company. Um, that talent pool is much larger. Um, so yeah, I think those are some of the challenges that uh, the big, big corporations I work with have faced. Thanks for that. And it also sounds like in amongst what you outlined as some of those challenges are some real opportunities. So, you know, you mentioned uh, wider access to talent, for example. Are there other opportunities that you've seen come out of this crisis? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a bit to what I was saying before, it's scalability. And um, how do you maintain that same growth? How do you maintain that same level of scale? And you know, if you are facing challenges, perhaps with um, that remote centric working, how do you maintain a good level of customer satisfaction, a good level of uh, NPS or net promoter score? And really automation can offer, um, you know, in, especially in the financial services industry where you've got disruptive fintechs, you know, there, there's red tape, there is the, the, the do nothing attitude perhaps some people have where they, they, they actually do their banking with one legacy uh, provider. And I think for those organizations, like I mentioned, with the, the changing of attitudes towards digital spend, you're going to suddenly have the, the kind of stalwarts that we all know on the high street becoming more digital friendly. That's how do you therefore differentiate? And, and some of those things are by scaling, of course. But then with scaling comes challenges where potentially automation comes in and you need to um, offset some of the more complex, sorry, some of the more simp simplistic queries that are coming in for your agents in a customer service center, but also um, for your employees. How do they access information around their holidays? How do they access information about their VPN and how they connect to that? How do they connect their home printer um, to, their, to their network? All these types of questions could be handled through automation mm -hmm. and allowing your resources to focus on more complex queries. Those are some great points because, I mean, I know personally working remotely, every time you need to do something, you know, that you're used to just having on tap in the office, you have to reach out to someone and, and ask them a question. So I think that those are some great granular examples of, of some of the kind of bumps that people run into when they're working remotely. I know we've been speaking broadly about digital acceleration, transformation, but I wonder if we could focus a little bit, and you mentioned this, on the financial services industry in particular. And given, you know, that they are a heavily, heavily regulated industry, are there particular challenges that they're facing with remote ways of working? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think financial services always has had that challenge. Um, but I think with working remotely, actually, it's offered them an opportunity because I know when I walk down the high street, I see lines outside my traditional banks, you know, and it's how do you therefore offer more online uh, experiences that mitigate the need to go to your bricks and mortar. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that they need to take advantage of and really sell the virtues of, but also specialization. Um, in the products that they sell, whether it be current accounts, savings accounts, Forex, foreign transfer, really doubling down on some of those services and then being able to cross sell other services to their customers and capturing some more of that market share. Great, thanks for that. And finally, I wanted to end on the virtual roundtable that we will be running together on the 25th of March, which will be exploring in more detail some of the challenges and opportunities that you outlined. But at the risk of a spoiler alert, I just wanted your view as to whether or not you think providers have the right tools to make remote ways of working successful, both for their employees and for their customers. So that's where I think, you know, you have to think about integration into your back end systems. You have to think about an intelligent virtual assistant that can understand the intents behind a question and allow you to, through your own endeavors, be able to create knowledge bases on the fly that can be accessible to your customer and your employee base and offer very quickly the right answers to the questions to alleviate any sort of service issues they may be experiencing. 
Thanks for that, Neil. And I look forward to hearing from more from you and from your fellow speakers on the 25th of March. I think there's a lot to delve into here in terms of, you know, as you pointed out, making this perhaps blended model of working um, work for everyone in the future. So thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Lisa. Looking forward to the roundtable too. And for everyone watching, thank you and see you on our next edition of FTT Chats.